and even in Sweden there are three different systems that we use, <laughs> so they are incom incompatible with each other, and uh, Europe is even worse, there are even more, so even more incompatibility, and also unfortunately in Sweden all of them are proprietary, and also doesn't work at all, for example 64 bit platforms. And, um, okay, yes. This, uh, okay, so we have, we have three different uh, EI systems in Sweden. Uh, Freebid, which is a free software project that I'm in, involved in. Uh, it implements the time guide system and solves this problem as well. Okay, so <laughs> this, is, uh, <laughs> this, this list is also not exhaustive. The, there is much more, there are much more systems in Europe. Um, many of them are proprietary. We have a lot of work to do, we could say. <laughs> okay, uh, third, bank ID, fiscal ID, it has a certificate. It can be a soft token and it can also be a smart card. Um, this is unlike most other systems, most people don't use uh, uh, soft tokens for electronic ID, but we know that actually. Um, there's also some work to use uh, cell phones for authentication. Uh, we use a, use a SIM card that can work as a key store. So. Okay, so Freebit, as the official software is proprietary, Freebit is reverse engineered. Um, it's been one year since the public release, uh, so it's quite unstable and alpha most uh, features or there, but uh, something, some stuff like, for example, enrollment is not implemented yet. Um, we have the C soft tokens and uh, the smart cards. And smart cards is what is done through, through an SC, but you can actually use anything in the PPC level. Technical information, uh, <coughs> free bit, you can even see if it, that's something really uh, we use the security library, crypto library, we use uh, OpenSSL. Um, in the beginning we used NSS actually, but uh, we found that it was too, it was too centric. It had a, it's a database uh, oriented model where it's hard to use tokens that are separate from the database. For example, they are on a file or on a USB stick or something. So we decided to go for OpenSSL instead. Um, of course, we can ask for smart card support. Works for people well. We also used uh, Freebit. It's a browser plugin. Um, it uh, we use the Netscape plugin API. It's a really old uh, API from Netscape. Fine. Um, it's, uh, it works in pretty much all browsers except Internet Explorer. <coughs> So, we have the signature, the way you get a signature from the bank guide software. It's uh, really simple. You send the here. You send a nonce value and some text you want to design it with the plugin. And uh, then you call it a function on it and back. Or first you get a confirmation window where you, you see the you can see the message you want to find and you can uh, you can also say a password you can select your token to use and so on. So when this is done you get an XML signature. Uh, you can see you have this data here, going to um, and also you have some uh, X-ray information there about the, the domain name and IP address, which is probably there. So, IP address and domain name probably the and uh, looking at that phishing and so on. And all security. Uh, otherwise, it's a typical uh, XML signature. So, it gets changed and uh, Biggest signature. 
extensions to these uh, protocols, they are not the true, true standards, and that has made it slightly harder to implement in uh, OpenSSL and so on, because we need to create uh, ASN, it is quite technical, but uh, we needed to create the uh, ASN1 uh, uh, objects and so on, for special, special data structures. Okay. So, there are a few difficulties. Uh, of course, it's a secret protocol that we reverse engineered, of course. Um, it still uses a lot of standards, you can see XML, PSIG, uh, B2T standard, or usual, usual stuff like this, and on, PKC7, and so on. And uh, one problem here is that uh, the server side software is not uh, publicly available. So testing your software, and there are also, to make it even harder, there are also different implementations. So you better be completely, uh, generate completely the same output, uh, make everything 100% compatible. Uh, also, of course, as we deal with uh, legal finding signatures and the only way to test things is to actually sign things. <coughs> uh, that makes the bugging a bit fantastic and a bit harder. <laughs> but, uh, sometimes okay there, there was a bug on a page when you register a new business and okay that's obviously something that's hard to like test yourself because when you need to register a business a little bit how many businesses do you have now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And uh, we also, there was also, as I told you, we use MSS initially. And, uh, uh, huh? Sorry, I should be interrupting you, but we say secret protocol. Who controls that protocol? So uh, this is, uh, it's uh, like a corporation of the Swedish banks. They have formed an organization that has uh, created their own. But they won't tell you. No. Okay. Even if you sign an NDA? I don't know. Oh. I, uh, <laughs> I don't think so. so they have their own uh, client, so they want to control everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, another very minor uh, annoyance. Uh, this protocol uses blocking JavaScript calls. That's a design in the protocol, and that means that when, when the, this uh, sign dialog appears when you enter your PIN, your browser window is frozen. And that is, we have a real ugly hack for that, but this is something you really can't do anything about. So, the future plugin developers uh, don't use blocking calls. Okay. To speak some about the uh, browser security in general, browser security software in general, um, how we should make it, what we should think about, and so on. Uh, also, we might not just want to use it for electronic identity because there are many other places. I mean, the technology you, you use in the bottom is uh, I mean, that's public key technology generate signatures and so on, and that can of course be used for other things. For example, an alternative to passwords, uh, alternative to session IDs, which prevent things like cookie sealing, uh, stolen password databases, of course, you don't have passwords, and dictionary attacks, and so on. Um, of course, if, you just, if this is just what you want, you can use TLS. If you just want authentication, you can use VLS, SSL, 
same thing. Um, but then we don't we don't get the signatures. Um, and why do we want to see that and they want to read probably all you know, the new but for example you may want to store the signature, you want to prove to someone a third party that this agreement has been made as well. Um, there's also the question of could you see what uh, what you're signing? Uh, so this is something that actually all EI did protocols don't do. And I think all of them actually they actually rely on the software and the computer uh, when it's and the software displays a message. Yeah. And that means that if, of course if the computer gets compromised, then you could change the message. That is the place the user is treated and signing something else. Uh, and that is something that's really hard to do nothing about, but if you at least display the message that you are signing, uh, we have to, to at least prevent some kinds of attack when uh, in middle lane and so on. Probably to use SSL in this case, but it's still additional security because you know how to build security holes in, in SSL implementation and so on. Uh, but one more thing that you need is uh, time stamping. Uh, this is because the signatures can have the need to last for a very long time. Typically, it can be 10 years or so on. It's typically mandated by some law somewhere. Um, there are two. Okay, the time stamping means that you add, you typically hash everything you have signed up, and it's a secure time stamping. And this means that if the crypto algorithm uh, behind the signature, if that is broken somehow some time later, then hash will prove that the, that the signature was made when the uh, crypto system was still not broken. This means that you can use your crypto, uh, you can rely on your signature for a longer time. And there are two different approaches. One is more centralized one where you use the trusted third party. You can also use uh, pub publishing your hashes essentially. Because it's in some place where you can verify that. And also another problem is not specific to uh, signature generation, it's also a problem of the uh, <coughs> cell, you can't, there's no standard for doing enrollment. The generating key pairs is not standardized at all. Uh, there are some vendor specific approaches like key and tag in Firefox, and I think that Chrome has some JavaScript object or something that you can use to generate a key pair in the browser. But it's uh, mostly or it's unstandardized, so you have just different approaches for each browser. Uh, this is something that could, something that each of the, or I think most, most of the AI systems have to do as well, have their, their own solution too. And you also have the question of how do you protect privacy? Um, in some cases, you might not want to reveal your identity, but you still want to be able to log into a website. For example, you book something and you want to be able to later unbook it. Um, but in this case, you don't want to use normal EI loops. And uh, I don't know <coughs> a good solution to this, but okay, if anyone has any, knows any good solution, can raise your hand or something. But, uh, a simple solution is just to generate different, different uh, key pair each time. You have to use the soft tokens just. The hard part is going to allow for many, many different tokens. Of course, you will also want to build on, if you create some new standard, uh, you would want to only implement a uh, layer between, essentially between, between the website and the TPC S11 interface. You don't want to deal with the script because you already have the TPC S11. And that doesn't mean you can use soft tokens as well. Um, signature formats are fortunately they are actually standardized. Um, 
I think pretty much all of you, I'm not sure if all of them, but most of you EM, EIDs use Exodus. Uh, Bike ID is an exception because they use Exodus DC, but on the other hand, Exodus DC is a pre-tested to Exodus. Okay. Uh, so here are some different existing preferred uh, ethics and software and also standards that are or specifications that are in progress that, that they don't have implementations yet. Uh, for example, we have different EIDs, FreeBuild, SVID software. We also have <coughs> the BOSS project, which is uh, a uh, that it is on a, it's not implemented yet, the implementation, but there is an application. Okay, is it, Anders, is it, do uh, you have any comments? <coughs> Anders, do you have any comments on the WASP? Uh? On the WASP? Yes. Okay, it's something I started um, a few years ago. It's a uh, uh, suggestion for a signature in browser. Okay. <laughs> Signature in browser specification. Uh, also some just for reference that the SSL of here last year. So it's also a project called GPG Alt. That's not education only, but that's GPG uh, keys can be used for signing as well. You could extend it. And probably this this is not exhaustive or I know it's not exhaustive. So I think. We were actually finished before time. I don't know. Very well. That was good, okay. So I made a tiny URL a link. Uh, this is a link to the Freebit Wiki. So uh, with links to different standards and different projects and different related things. Okay. Okay, questions? Thank you.